Hello again. I want to look at Galatians chapter 6 and see what we can find. I hope you're finding the, uh, these studies helpful. I hope it's opening your eyes, and especially in this book, that you begin to live in the Spirit and that you grow in Christ because God wants you to uh, enjoy the freedom that you've received in Christ. But we see in Galatians chapter 6 and verse 1, we've, uh, he's, he's uh, starting to lead us into more of a practical way of living this life of walking in the Spirit. He says in verse 1, brethren or sistren, bro brothers or sisters, if, you, if a man is overtaken in a trespass, you which are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness. Remember from the last lesson, the fruit of the Spirit has gentleness, but gentleness is not weakness. It's power under control is actually what it is. Consider yourself lest you also be tempted. So he's not talking about restoring people that are not saved because... Sinners are going to sin. But there are people, in, how many of you know that there are people in the church that sometimes are still trapped in their old lifestyle? They, they may be trapped. They're, they're, they're doing the best they can. They might not know how to be free. But you who are spiritual, we are to restore such a one in the spirit of, of gentleness. Again, gentleness is strength under control. When somebody falls into a sin, uh, we shouldn't be, we shouldn't get angry with them. You know what? I've seen people in the church for 30 years and somebody gets saved and they've been in the church a month and they're expecting them to live just like they are. But no, it took you 30 years and you're still gossiping. But oh, I didn't mean to say that. <laughs> I did. But uh, anyway, we're expecting people that are babes in Christ to live like people that have uh, lived in Christ for years and years and years. So we're not to be angry with them. We're not to act superior to other people. We are in a spirit of gentleness to restore other people through love. If you love people, you're not putting them down. You're not making a spectacle of them. You're not, you're not trying to act superior to them. You're not using the gifts of the Spirit to make yourself look puffed up. No, you're using the gifts of the Spirit to help encourage other people. Remember, it's a gift. It's not your ability. It's God's empowerment in you. God is using you to show himself off for you, actually for him to help other people. Verse 2 says this. He says, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. What's the law of Christ? It's the law of love. These burdens that he's talking about are, are other believers that are trapped, they're in traps, they're in addictions to sin, whatever they are. You know, and I wouldn't be criticizing somebody else's addictions because you might have an addiction that you're, you know, you might think it's okay. You might think, well, why are they still doing that? And yet you're a warrior. The Bible says God's not given us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and of a sound mind. Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. That doesn't, that doesn't sound like a request to me. That sounds like a command. So, you know, don't be criticizing others because of the things that they're trapped in while you might still be trapped in something yourself. No, we want to restore. We want to restore. We want to build up. As a matter of fact, the person you build up might 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 lift you up someday. Just a thought. So, so again, he says, bear ye one another's burdens that, that you fulfill the law of Christ. And then in verse 3, he says, 
For if anyone thinks himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. In other words, you're walking in pride. You think you're better than everybody else. You, you might think, well, you know, I've been in Christ for this long. I've been in the church this long. That doesn't make any difference. How are you living and, and how are you living and how are you displaying Christ? I never saw, you know, Christ didn't come to be served. He came to serve people. He came to serve. It was the Pharisees that were criticizing. He says, look at your teacher. He's, with, he's eating with publicans and sinners. And Jesus said, I didn't come to call the righteous. I came to call sinners to repentance. I came to call sinners to repentance. And so that's, our, that's, that's your ministry. You know, some people have wondered. You know, there, for years, they've been wondering what their ministry is. Your ministry is to love people and to lift them up. Your ministry is to validate people. Your ministry is to say, this is, this is how God helped me, and I want to help you. Just the thought. You know, the more you exalt yourself, the higher you go, the greater the fall. Because those who exalt themselves will be humbled. You know, and I'm and I'm talking from experience. You know, and I'm kind of a I'm kind of a guy that doesn't try to put himself up, but you know, you can be you can have a spiritual pride, you know, and it doesn't matter whether people see it or not, God sees it. So that's just the thought. So what are we talking about? We're talking about helping people. We're talking, we're, we're not to be superior over other people. We're to help other people. We're to help other people. Superiority is a faulty measure. That's because you're measuring yourself against other people. Your measurement is you and Christ. How are you measuring up? That's just a thought. Christ is our standard. He is our comparison. And what did Je what was what does the scripture say about Jesus? He was moved with compassion. What's, what's your driving force? Notoriety or compassion? Thank you, Jesus. Well, when, when we compare ourselves with Christ, it causes us to run to God. Why? Because I don't measure up. I don't measure up. I sometimes want to write things on Facebook. I want to tell people, give them a piece of my mind. I want to tell them. And after I do that, I feel something on the inside of me. It's an itch. And that itch says, don't post that. Why? Because it's not love. It's not love. So in obedience, to God, and in, a, in wanting to walk in love, I hit the delete button. And I watched that line just erase it all. And then I either let it alone, or I say something in a way that is not degrading to somebody else. We are to walk in love. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 4 says this. He says, but let, but let, but let one examine his own work and then he will have rejoicing in himself and not in another. He says, for each man shall bear his own load. You know, I was watching a game show years ago. I was just a kid, and they said, well, hey, this, this is where the Bible contradicts itself. But he's not talking about, he's talking about bearing the burdens of others, helping them in their sins, and this is talking about you bearing your ministry. This is your load is you fulfilling your ministry in Christ. It's, it's totally different. It is two different words, two different Greek words. So that's not a contradiction. This is you fulfilling the law of Christ, helping other people, and your load is the ministry that you're walking in, that you're supposed to walk in. Your load or burden is to give the love of Christ to sinners like Jesus did. You say, oh, Lord, I want to be like Jesus. Well, if you want to be like Jesus, you're going to have to love those that sometimes are not lovely. 
You might even have to love somebody that don't like you. They might be calling you names. They might be spitting out accusations against you that are not true. But God's going to tell you to trust him and sometimes keep your mouth shut. Just a thought. So you, your load or your burden is here. It's your ministry from God to minister to others and not just be focused on yourself. See, that's a problem with us thinking about having a ministry. We think that the ministry is to exalt us, get us in front of people, make us feel good about ourselves. But ministry is not to make you feel good about yourself. Ministry is for you to help others. Sometimes ministry <laughs> doesn't feel good at all. I, well, thank you, Lord. I can tell you many stories. I tell, Lord, I'm done with this. I don't want any more abuse. But the Lord said, follow after Christ. I remember saying, Lord, Jesus, you know, I can't go back to my hometown because they didn't receive Jesus. But the Lord said, Jesus went back to his home, own hometown and they tried to kill him there. Just a thought. But Jesus still loved them. Let's keep going. So I, verse six says, let him who is taught the word share all good thing with he who teaches. Well, if you're hearing the word being taught, then you need to share physical things with those who teach because really that's their ministry. That's their job. Okay. Giving to those who are teachers of the word of God. That's what he's talking about. And I'm, I'm not here to tell you what to give, but when, but, but when they're feeding you, it's good to give back because we're going to see this in a, in a later thing. Those who are studying the word of God are fulfilling their work just as one who is working in an occupation. Okay. How many of you would go to work if you didn't get paid? Just a thought. And then he goes on to say this. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, that will he reap. Whatever you sow, that will you reap. Well, let's keep going. I, I don't want to stop there. He says, for he who sows to his flesh reaps corruption. Reaps corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit will reap of the Spirit, life everlasting or eternal life. But I don't want to take this out of context. Of course, here he's talking about giving to those who are ministering the Word of God, but he hasn't left the whole teaching of the book. If you're walking, if you're walking in your own flesh, you're, you're trying to live by the law. But if you're living by grace, through faith, you're walking by the Spirit, you're hearing what the Spirit of says, and you're going to reap life everlasting. If you try to live by the law, you're just going to reap corruption. Just going to reap corruption. Now, should I ignore the Ten Commandments? No, shouldn't ignore the Ten Commandments. They should be a guide, but not something that you do to try to fulfill uh, a need to be justified because Christ is your justification. Let's go on in verse 8. It says, for he, well, I already read it, but I'll read it again. He who sows to the flesh of the flesh shall reap corruption, but he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Don't be self-deceived into thinking that this doesn't apply to you. It applies to everybody. Whether you're living by the law or whether you're, whether you're living by faith, you're going to reap what you sow. Thank you, Jesus. Well, why would God be so mean to me? Well, if you sow good things, don't you want to reap good things? The, the law of sowing and reaping is a blessing. I mean, think of the farmers that uh, plant all those good seeds so that they can grow crops to feed you. 
What about sowing, sowing into a ministry? What if God tells you to give? Wouldn't you like, wouldn't you like to reap the benefit of, that, benefit of that? All right, if you sow or if you plant a seed to the flesh, eventually you will reap destruction in one form or another. What kind of destruction? Well, if you continue to hate, it's going to open the door. The Bible says in another place, give no place to the devil. If I'm rude and crude and mean to other people, I've opened the door to the devil and it's going to allow him to cause us to reap destruction. Just a thought. Verse 9, but let uh, but let us not grow weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. You know, sometimes people uh, sow good things for a while, but then they get tired. Don't get tired. Just continue to plant, and eventually you're going to reap the good things. Not everything that you plant is going to be reaped in this life. There are eternal rewards that you're going to receive. You don't want to. You don't want to get. A, you don't want to spend it all down here. You want to be able to have something that you, that that God can give you a crown of glory for. But again, I'm not all one pie in the sky in the future. God wants to bless us now, but there's some things that are going to be for the future. He goes on to say in verse ten. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all. What does all mean in the Greek? All. That means good. That means people you don't even know. Especially, but he says, especially to those who are, who are of the household of faith. Look for opportunities to be good. Look for opportunities to validate. Look for opportunities to smile at somebody. Look for opportunities not to take advantage of somebody, but to, but to give them a hand up but especially to the household of faith. He's, uh, if we are doing good, we will have good things returned to us, the law of sowing and reaping. We also must remember that payday is coming, something we can look forward to in the next life. Verse 11, Paul says, um, uh, let's read it out of the Bible here. He says, see what See what a large letter I have written to you in my own hand. I just want to say this. The other books of Paul, he was, uh, he was speaking it and somebody was writing it down. Well, here Paul's writing with his own hand. He says, as many as desire to make a showing in the flesh or to live by the law, to, to, to look good by, by doing the law, he says, these would compel you to be circumcised, only that they should not suffer persecution for the cross. In other words, they're doing it to look good in other people's eyes, but they're not doing it for you, they're doing it for them. Verse 13, he says, for not even those who are circumcised keep the law. Why? Because you can't keep all the law but they desire to have you circumcised that they may boast. In other words, they get you to do their rules. They say, hey, look, they're doing it because I, I taught them. Well, no, I don't want to get you to do I want you to follow Christ. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. But at verse 14 says, But God forbid that I should boast except in the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. In other words, he's not boasting because of what he's done by living by the flesh. I'm boasting because of what Christ has done. I am free because of what Christ has done. I am exalted because... What do you mean you're exalted? I am... I have been raised with Christ, seated with Christ in heavenly places, far above all principality. And other, I can't even get into that now. You're far above demons, principalities, and powers because you're seated with Christ in heavenly places. 
You don't have to boast about that. You're seated with Christ. Hallelujah. But oh man, I got to, I cannot quit until I do this. He says, for in Christ, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but a new creation. This whole book is leading you from getting out of the law so that you can walk in the Spirit, so that you can be a new creation in Christ Jesus, so that, so that you're not living by the flesh, but you are living because you're a new person in Christ Jesus and the Holy Spirit is empowering you. You're a new person. You say, but I still think the old white. Well, all of us have to get our mind renewed. Yeah, but I still feel this. We need to allow the Holy Spirit to change. You know, that's not because you're, you're not a new creation. That's because when you think some, some old things, you're, you're, your spirit on the inside of you, your, your new creation. It's not just because the Holy Spirit's grieved. It's because your new creation's grieved. And therefore you say, Lord, help me, show me. And he tells you, and you might have to repent. You might have to, you might have to go even apologize. My, wouldn't that be something? You have to go apologize. Man, I am not above apologizing. I'm not above apologizing to my wife. I'm not above apologizing to my kids. I'm not about, if I've done something and man, I feel something in my spirit that I'm willing to go apologize. Be, why? Because I'm a new creation and I want that new creation to be empowered and matured. In Jesus' name, be matured. Amen.